and it's 10 a.m. right here in Lagos, Nigeria. Good morning, good evening. Wherever in the world you're watching from, it's Business Morning Live on Channels Television. I'm Ladi Williams. First off, let's take a look at what's in the news. Our economic uh, think tank, Center for Promotion of Private Enterprises, has identified some of the factors that can help tackle Nigeria's high inflation rate. According to the CEO, uh, Dr. Muda Yusuf, the major issue needed to be addressed includes uh, that all forms of taxes and levies on the importation of petroleum products should be suspended uh, to give a respite on the high cost of energy, while highlighting the key drivers of inflation, such as increasing transport and energy costs, uh, high import and manufacturing inputs, as well as worsening uh, depreciation of the Naira. Uh, Dr. Yusuf calls for deeper stakeholder engagement across sectors to uh, develop an enduring strategy on the way forward. And the federal government says the national grid, which collapsed some days ago, has been recovered while well, efforts are on to push uh, more megawatts to the grid. This is according to the Minister of Power, Mr. Abubakar Ali, who briefed the State House correspondent at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting uh, presided over by Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Mr. Ali, who likened uh, Nigeria's uh, power challenge to a war situation, maintained that the country generates up to 8,000 uh, megawatts of power. Do take a listen. This is like a war situation. We need to find solutions. We need to come out with answers. Uh, quick ones, emergency solutions. The supply that goes down on the grid, it triggers some response. Some started to trip down, and that also causes the whole system to go down. We had it there first today. We recovered it. We had it again, we recovered it. So we are on top of it. We have recovered it now. The grid is back. We are trying to get more mega was to push on the grid. The grid is not that strong to carry so much load. We have to maintain it and load it gradually. We are getting approval now of about five billion, over five billion, to open up and expand Lagos Ogun. Where Presently, they may not be enjoying uh, uh, quality electricity. Now to our first conversation with uh, rising energy uh, prices and uh, power outages. Uh, bakers under the edges of the Premium uh, Bread Makers Association of Nigeria are uh, mulling a total shutdown of operations, you know, uh, following this uh, steady price uh, increases. Uh, we have with us in the studio, Angela Onora Imano, President's Premium Bread Makers Association of Nigeria, to paint a picture of how bad it is. Good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, Ladi. Great to have you on the program. Thank you, and uh, good morning, you as at home. Yeah, so uh, quite interesting times, you know, rising you know, energy costs, uh, commodity prices uh, surging, and now we see uh, bakers are, are not uh, are feeling the bite uh, right now. Can you paint a picture of how bad it is? Um, it's indeed very, very bad. It's indeed very, very bad. Um, it's a tory time for us uh, in the baking industry in Nigeria because uh, prices have gone out of our reach. You know, uh, nobody saw this coming, especially this, this new thing. Yeah, it's been spiking quite a while for some time, but it got to a head um, last week when uh, the whole thing just collapsed on our faces. You know, as businesses, as business owners, and as people that are involved in uh, pro pro producing um, a staple to Nigerians, it's been very, very tough for us. Uh, the cost of energy is gone bonkers. You know, energy, uh, like I said, last week, Saturday, I bought diesel for 8.50. Okay, by yesterday, I think it has um, come down a bit to like a 750 thereabouts. But even at that, it is killing our businesses are hemorrhaging. You know, as premium bread makers, you understand, we what do we envision? We envision where there will be um, sustainability in pricing for us so that we can be able to plan. You know, because of course, you know, we run mechanized bakeries, you, you understand. And for us, diesel. Diesel is a key component of our energy sources because, of course, you know, there's nothing like um, public energy in my bakery. We've and most of my members go through like three weeks going to one month now. We've never had electricity, public electricity. You understand me? It's either one complaint or the other from the disco, you know. So, look at it for a, a medium sized bakery that is running using diesel to power to run the, the to burn the, the ovens. 
to power generators, and then to run your vehicles. You know the costs. I spend nothing less than two million weekly on diesel for small businesses, not even small minor businesses. How do you think that business will be profitable? We are hemorrhaging as premium bread makers. And you know, if this trend continues, I am telling you it's going to exacerbate and worsen the current uh, insecurity and unemployment problem in this country. That's uh, quite interesting. I would see uh, uh, commodity prices are also rising, like uh, with that of uh, wheat, you know, due to geopolitical tensions uh, with uh, Russia and Ukraine. But uh, uh, on the scale of reference, which one uh, impacts you the more? Um, if you scale them, all of it in proud sorts. Let me give you this. Last week, the price of um, flour increased by 1,000 naira. And for any increase, in the price of flour, any 1,000, it shelves off 10 naira from our margins. 10 naira from our margins. In a business we are complaining, we are not even making margins. You, for an average pack, maybe seven, um, 700 gram pack, um, pack size of sliced bread, your margin on it is maybe 8 naira. Already, the price of flour has gone up. Okay, because flour constitutes about uh, 65 to 70% of the percentage of our input in our inputs. Okay, it shows of that, what do you have? Of that 8 Naira, you have a deficit of 2 Naira already. That means you are in negative already. You are going down south. Sh uh, sugar increased from 21,000 Naira to 23,500 Naira. You understand? Adding to the rules that you are already encountering with the increase in flow. So, it goes across. Software that we used to buy for 300,000, it's now 650,000 650, Naira. This that we used to buy for maybe 10,000 is now 20,300 naira. Milk, of course, that we used to buy for maybe uh, 25, 29,000 is now 85,000 naira. Egg that we used to buy 800 naira is now 2,200 naira. So you can see that before now, in our costing elements and in our costing template, diesel is something that we do not even um, consider to be something that is too um, weighty. But now it is taking the place of even flour. So it's very, very tough for us as businesses. Right. We are hemorrhaging, and as I said, if care is not taken, uh, the businesses will just run down, go under. And you know, as premium bread makers, we employ so many Nigerians in their millions, not only directly, but indirectly too, and then the, distri and the, and the distributors, men and women that come to our uh, off-takers. Do you know the effect of they are not being in business with cause and exacerbate the current situations we have in this country? Uh, yeah, unemployment. Rate. Right, so uh, before now, you know, before uh, the diesel prices, you know, started going up, uh, what were the issues in, in your industry? Uh, before now, the issues has always been escalating cost of our inputs. And... Whether you like it or not, this country belongs to each and every one of us, and we must make concerted efforts to ensure that some of these inputs we 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 we, we use in our in bread making are produced, manufactured, um, are manufactured locally, because for every job, for every job, for every product that is not produced here, you are sourcing job to somebody out there. So how can an industry survive on maybe like a 90 to 95% um, 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 import dependent on the inputs that you use in making bread? It's, it's, not, it's not sustainable. It can be. It can be. It doesn't make any sense, to be very honest. Right. And, and talking about the inputs, you know, what's your relationship, you know, with the uh, millers, uh, sugar refiners, and the uh, baking ingredient uh, manufacturers? Because, you know, their prices are going up, and I'm wondering why. <laughs> Well, for the uh, millers, um, uh, we've been engaging with them and our sister um, association. We've met with the um, minister and the, the, we met with the, um, the team in Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment sometime last year when the prices were just spiraling out of control. Um, yes, the ministry graciously intervened and there was the tau, you understand, there was the, there was the freeze in the pricing. But this whole thing came to an head sometime again in January when prices started spiking again, you know. So, as businesses, as businesses, it is very, very, very tough for us. Very, very tough for premium bread makers yeah, and, and bakers generally. Right. And, and you're on an association. Now, what, what kind of conversations are you having with the government at this point? Well, like I said, we've interfaced with the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. Um, they've, uh, we've given them our own positions, ourselves and our sister um, association, and what we told them were very clear. 
the, you, you know, the government charges 30% of with import, the federal government. There was this redevelopment levy that was created by the Jonathan administration in 2012 as a stopgap to help in the backward integration of production of wheat in the country. Of course, you know, 13, about 13 states in Nigeria produce um, um, wheat. You understand? So the essence or the idea the, the was that they were going to use the funds, the 15% for wheat import levy, to you know, do extension services, go some, I mean, uh, do research on seedlings, and then give some part of it to the um, to the bakers to use in shoring up their businesses that were already that were going down then. But as we speak, the, it was supposed to be two years or so. Then they stopped doing it. But th today, the federal government is still collecting that 15 percent, 15 percent um, uh, with development levy plus another 15 percent, which is making it a cumulative of 30 percent on wheat import. If you pay 30% on wheat import, how will those businesses even survive? You are even talking about the millers now. So we've asked the federal government, look at this fund. Please remove that 15% with development levy that you, 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 you levy the millers. I mean, it can ameliorate, it will go a long way to ameliorate, to cushion the effect for us. By then, now thereby cascading down to us a reduction in price. We've made those positions known to government. And we've told government clearly that this industry needs some, some, of, for, some form of support. We don't get anything from the government. It's only you tax us, you do this, they are chasing us here and there. And at the end of the day, what are we getting? You know, bread is a staple. Bread is something that the average Nigerian is supposed to just pick, grab and go because you can eat it with anything. You eat it with uh, your beans, right. you take it with water. And in some homes, for uh, Ladi, you know, if there is, yeah, no, bread, if there is no bread at home, yeah. if the children have even eaten it, they say, Daddy, Mommy, food no be out so. Right. That's the truth. Because when they come from school, if they are not, if they, are even, if they, are, if they come from school, there's a spread on the table there, they go there, they grab it, you know, just spread on it, they eat, they drink water, and they are playing. Right. So, the government must not try with it. In the scheme of things, it should even rank above a PMS. Mm. I'm telling you, because a hungry nation is an angry nation. Right. You understand me? And people are losing their job already. There's a, already a saturated um, unemployment market. And we are going to act to it from the people that may lose their jobs. Like I told you, we are operating at 50% capacity. We had about we had about a hundred and something that we workers in my bakery. I had to do some right sizing, but at the end of the day, since we have dropped by fifty percent, I needed to say, okay, I will drop workers by fifty percent. But you look at it, are these not Nigerians? Now you begin to bring money from outside, from other things you are doing to subsidize uh, 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 bread making. It's not done. It's not tenable anywhere. We are not a charitable organization. Right. Even the federal government that calls itself the federal government today in Nigeria, you know, they want they are making a, they are making moves to even remove subsidy on FOL, not to talk of business concerns that are running at a loss, subsidizing bread for Nigerians. And the way it is going, um, it is not looking good for us at all. And that's why we are saying if this issue of fuel, I mean the diesel and all the other inputs are not looked into, we are going to just shut down. And, and, uh, and even in uh, Egypt, I think bread is actually subsidized uh, in, in those parts. But, you know, if, if this actually continues now, let's say, you know, rising cost of energy and um, all these commodities, if you are to pass on this cost to consumers, paint a picture for me how the price would be. A 700 pack um, size of uh, bread be going for 1,500 naira. If we want to pass on the cost, that's what I've been saying. You know, we are holding back on a lot of things. We are running at a loss because we want to feed the nation. How long do we continue doing this? In other climes in Africa, go look at it. There is a freeze on um, uh, duty importation on wheat because you know wheat is a very political commodity. You understand me? So look at it now. For instance, a 700 pack size of bread is going for maybe about 450 naira and 500 naira, depending on the on the recipe and depending on the bakery. You, you, you know, but if this continues, that pack size that I'm talking about, we go for 1,200. I'm not joking. You know, but people, we, people out there don't even know. We've had an increase of about 200 percent, and we've been, able, we've, been able, we've been able to increase prices by maybe just seven percent. How can that industry survive, Ladi? Tell me, how can it survive? Right. But well, is renewable energy playing any part in your industry? No. For now, you know, when you want to do maybe renewable energy or maybe your um, your 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 energy mix or whatever you want to do. Is it not where you have the funding that you can do it? Does BOI do anything for us? Bank of Industry? 
do, do, do we get any grant? These things are done. They are a deliberate effort by government to ensure that these things come into play. If you are substituting, if you are eliminating this or you are doing an energy mix or you are doing renewable energy, it, the, the idea must come from, from the government. Where do we have the funds to want to do that? For instance, now, you are like, looking at, okay, just a solar to begin to power some part of your district. You are talking of maybe 30, 40 million. Where do you get those kind of funds from? in businesses that are suffering, in businesses that are struggling. The banks will not even help you out. There was a national loan that the CBN gave out. How many bakers did they give them to in Nigeria? How many bakers did they give them to in Nigeria? We must begin to begin to ask, as Nigerians, we must begin to ensure we hold government accountable in some of these things to ensure that if money is meant for a particular industry, it should get to the end users. There should be an audit. So that people know that this money is going to to this place, to the, to such and so place. If it doesn't get there, then you can you can know who and who to hold responsible. And if it gets there, those people that took the money must be held accountable. So it's a question of accountability from everybody, from Quite the governments and even with the business owners. Quite interesting. But what, what kind of policies would you like to see in, in that sector from the government? First off, the discourse must be made to be functional. We've had three. Uh, we've we've had three three system collapse in three days three in three days do you know the cost of energy is an integral part of whatever you are doing whatever you are doing energy is key you understand for instance it is because of the peculiar nature of nigeria that's why the the uh, baking equipment they are bringing into nigeria they are our ovens and all that are running on diesel elsewhere they run on electricity go to the anglo I mean, francophone countries around us here small small countries this is run on a they run on a, a electricity you understand me? because they are the 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 the, the, the are this thing, they are ovens are run by elements but here because there is no power when the people that are the people that are developing the one that is coming to nigeria they now said okay since they are not getting um, uh, uh, electricity in nigeria let us do diesel and that is the 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 cross of the matter you know ordinarily we should do electricity you go in there, go to Europe and America and then ev everywhere. When you are baking, people don't know. They're here. Energy costs every day. You are peddling diesel. We are having tanks, all sorts of capex and, and opex. Right. You know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a good one. So the government right. must look at it. And then critically too, for this diesel thing, the government must begin to look at um, the um, uh, midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority must begin to do their oversight function. I, I think there's a disconnect because we just feel that there was price gouging recently. You understand where the associations or the marketers were taking turns to, they are taking turns to maybe say to you sell today, you sell tomorrow in due scarcity and uh, 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 cause um, uh, cause a lot of distortion in people's um, um, uh, production. You know these people that are doing this. I didn't know Nigerians. If the industries begin to close and you are making so much profit, what's the bane of that? What's the essence of the profit? Profit right. that cannot benefit humanity. Profit that cannot be of any help to, um, uh, to, to people. Businesses are shutting down. You are smiling to the banks. Is that the right way? Is that the best way to go about it? How can product increase from 200, 198, 200, 350, 410, 450, 500, 550, um, 650, 850? And now we are talking about 700 and above. Come on. It will not work. Not only even in the bread industry, we are talking of all other industries. industries right. Man was lamenting the other day. So the government on its own should come in, the federal government must come in and look at how to solve this problem of the discourse. It's not I, it's not you. It's still the same uh, politicians that the discourse, instead of it going to, um, to, 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 uh, to professionals, partitioned as though we were partitioning Berlin Wall. Okay. And here we are today. All right. Well, I hope this uh, issue is resolved uh, on time because even the Bible talks about our daily bread. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nora Manuel, uh, Premium Breadmaker Association of Nigeria President. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you very much, Ladi. Time is of essence. Yes. Thank you. All right. So uh, after the break, uh, commodities uh, market update is next. Do stay with us. This is Business Morning. <laughs> Now, 
half of commodities market up there. Let's uh, take a look at what's happening in the oil market. We see uh, Brent uh, crude uh, gained about a uh, dollar eighty cents uh, to ninety nine dollars eighty six cents a barrel after falling uh, three consecutive trading sessions. And the U.S. West Texas Intermediate uh, crude futures uh, was up about one dollar sixty cent uh, to trade at ninety six dollars sixty seven. Uh, sent a barrel. All right, now we have a uh, Dumebi AK financial uh, analyst, a financial derivatives company, joining us now uh, to break it all down. Good morning, uh, Dumebi. Wow, below a hundred dollars. Uh, well, I, I guess a pullback was, you know, somewhat uh, expected. Yeah. 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 How are you seeing the market? Well, the oil markets, like as usual, are very are always ruled by a lot of sentiment. But um, currently, there are a few things um, happening in the market, and that's because the first one is the fact that um, OPEC is quite um, skeptic on um, its outlook for. Um, global oil demand and you remember that they were quite optimistic about um, the outlook for 2022 expecting that global oil demand would you know um, increase by um, 4.15 million barrels per day but clearly with the um, resurgence of COVID cases in China a major importing country or the largest importing country of crude oil and um, the fact that um, the Russian Ukraine war is still lingering so that has provided a pretty grim outlook for um, oil demand, for their oil demand forecast. And so the short-term um, oil demand outlook is looking pretty slow. And they also look at what's happening on the supply side as well. Um, there are some things that have, that have gone on. Um, number one, Saudi Arabia is planning to sell some oil to China, pricing it in the yuan, not in dollars. Wow. So, and, um, and currently, China already buys more than 25% of Saudi Arabia's oil. And Saudi Arabia is the largest exporting, uh, largest crude oil exporting country, and China the largest oil importing country. So this almost, you know, poses some level of threat to the U the um, U.S. dollar's dominance in the global oil um, global oil market space. Um, that, alongside the fact that there's, you know, continuing talks on the U.S. Um, Iran nuclear deal, the um, easing of the Venezuelan. Um, all um, all production restrictions and the fact that OPEC could increase, you know, supply to somewhat um, prop up, um, could, to, could, could um, increase supply to somewhat um, taper um, global inflationary pressures as well. So all of these things put together are uh, making um, the beers, you know, have some level some of level good time of. <laughs> in the in the oil market. I, I guess the shorters are, are having fun uh, yes. uh, right now. All right, talking about the inflation uh, data for uh, February. Uh, is out and rose by 15.7 percent here, here in Nigeria. Everyone's uh, fighting uh, inflation globally. How, how do you see the data uh, for Nigeria? Yeah, and um, the fact that it rose um, both month on month and on on, on 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 the annual basis clearly points to the fact that you know what's happening in the domestic economy or what's happening in the domestic market is being reflected in the official um, data. We expect that the figures for March could even come in you know, higher, and that's because we're, receiving, like, we're feeling the major heat of the increase in diesel prices, the increase in the price of rice, the increase in the price of PMS, the fuel scarcity, all of that. We're receiving, we're, we're you know, feeling the, the brunt of it more in March. But the February numbers clearly point to some level of... Um, um, distortion, you know, in the economy, especially when it comes to commodity prices, and you know, the, the trickle down effect is from the global economy down to the domestic economy, especially when we look at energy costs. So, first of all, we're looking at the price. In fact, the price of diesel now has skyrocketed to about like 800 naira per litre in some parts of the country. Some other parts were seeing it at 700. And remember that, you know, um, companies, a lot of companies run on diesel. Um, a lot of businesses run on diesel. The food trucks. That the, the, the trucks that distribute food across the country run on diesel. Some of the farms run on diesel. Most of the and the bakers just spoke now. Exactly. <laughs> so every it's it's you know the, the the multiplier effect of this is that number one, operating costs are going to continue to increase. The price of these commodities that we depend on in terms of staples, in terms of um, en energy, in terms of, in terms of um, telco, telco services, all of these things could increase further, you know, and this would, you know, further increase um, inflation. And not only that, it would also affect the consumers because when prices increase this way, um, 
manufacturers or producers are somewhat forced to you know pass the uh -huh. burden to the consumers even if they would like to shelve some they would not take it all consumers would have to you know bear um, some of the brunt of this i remember that um, food inflation for the february numbers it it declined marginally and that's what and, and the major reason for that is the fact that consumer demand was weak there was some level of price resistance you know to the increase in if commodities so people didn't exactly demand as much you know typically January, you know, it's a slow month coming after, you know, the the festive season blues. And then when you, when you go into February, you see that there's some level of uptick in demand and all of that. But we didn't, we didn't see that this time around. And that's to show that consumers are really, really squeezed because income levels are not increasing. And with this loop continuing, the expectation is that, you know, we could, this, this you know, this loop is going to definitely continue. And the expectation is that the economy will continue to be squeezed this way. Quite interesting. Uh, uh, rising inflation, rising prices, but uh, low demand. Yes. <laughs> Quite an interesting one. But uh, talking about, uh, you see the U.S. Fed, they've increased their rates yes, first time yes, in, uh, yes. <laughs> in so long, about 25 uh, basis points. Uh, mm -hmm. Quite interesting. How is this going to impact, you know, uh, emerging economies? Of course, this has a very um, direct impact on um, emerging economies. So let's start with the fact that um, the, the U.S. Fed is taking like a softish land approach when it comes to the increase in, um, in, in, increase in interest rates. Now, although they've said they're going to be aggressive, you know, analysts are saying that they're still going to take somewhat of a soft landing approach because the, the impact on the economy could be quite um, harsh, especially with the fact that energy prices are still high. And remember that there were well, you know, they, so entering um, the election year, you know, for the U.S. as well. So um, Biden's administration is definitely going to try to keep things, you know, at a very um, considerable, considerable level for everyone so that, you know, the economy continues to run smoothly. Now, moving to the impact on emerging markets. First of all, when interest rates increase, emerging markets um, receive the brunt in terms of higher borrowing costs. So countries that borrow, um, this simply means that their costs of the external debt is going to increase now let's bring this home to nigeria nigeria already has an extremely high debt level profile debt servicing costs you know are already very high debt saving costs um debt service to revenue ratio is already over 80 percent and this is going to you know definitely increase but another thing that this could point towards is that it could encourage or somewhat hint the cbn or the mpc rather to increase um, interest rates at the upcoming meeting. It's already high, though. <laughs> <laughs> Double yeah, so no, it, it's going to, you know, the, first of all, when there's an increase in interest rates this way, um, for the CBN now, the MPC I'm talking about, if they increase interest rates, you know, it's somewhat keeps um, investors within the economy. So because with the U.S. Fed increasing um increasing interest rates. What this means is that the rates on um, fixed income securities within their markets would increase and investors would likely divest, you know, um, from emerging markets to this economy. So this, and this has an impact on your Forex, on, on, on the Forex level, it has an impact on the currency, it has an inf impact on the stock market activities, it has an impact on um, borrowing costs, it has an impact on debt levels, it has an impact on debt service costs as well. And remember that Nigeria currently is revenue strapped. Um, on the news, um, saw that um, the, the finance minister, they're, plan, they're planning to um, take some cash from the Eurobond sale that already happened, um, you know, I think last year, you know, right. yeah, last year. So they're planning to take about $2.2 .2 billion from that no to subsidy. exact for fuel subsidies. Right. And unfortunately, you know, putting this money in fuel subsidies, not even in ramping up refinery activities, just simply, it's almost as though you're putting money in a recurrent expenditure because fuel subsidies don't bring you any, any, um, it doesn't help you generate any revenue. So we're spending more, pushing more money into the economy, spending more dollars, increasing our debt level, increasing our debt servicing costs without any um, 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 commensurate increase in revenue. So with that happening, you know, obviously it continues to keep the rev keep the um, federal government um, revenue strike, increases our budget deficit, increase, you know, worsens our fiscal position. So there are lots of things happening, uh, a lot of things that could happen or that will happen with the fact that the U.S. Fed has increased um, interest rates. And, and those seen, are just um, a few. The Naira in the parallel market trading for about five, 582 yes. Uh, to yes. a dollar. That's uh, yes. quite interesting. And yes. I would say the import cover 
I see the stand uh, stands at about 9.01 months. Uh, should we be worried? <laughs> I mean, um, it's definitely something that we have to um, raise our eyebrows to because um, it's not really an encouraging situation, especially with the fact that the global economy is not exactly stable. And the global economy is not exactly stable. Remember that Nigeria is basically at the center of it all. In, and when I mean center, I don't mean center like we're enjoying the situation. Yeah. We're at the center of all the jabs. Um, if all prices are too high because we're net, because we're net uh, uh, um, um, importers of crude petroleum, refined petroleum products, we're feeling the brunt of this in our, rev in our revenue and our expenditure. Um, the fact that the U.S. Fed has increased rates, we're also going to have some level of you know, shock from there. So clearly, um, the Naira is taking a hit, um, and that's because we're not receiving any significant increase in revenue. And remember that Nigeria is more sensitive to changes in oil production and prices, and our oil production level has remained significantly low um, compared to the OPEC quota. Nigeria still produces on average about like 1.3 million barrels per day, compared to the OPEC quota of about 1.7. So that's significant so we're not even producing as much to meet up with our um, domestic demand and our revenue obligations. And the more um, revenue strapped we are, the more um, impact this would have on the currency. Right. And remember that forex demand is increasing. Businesses have to run. Manufacturers will definitely need forex to import raw materials. And you know, people are people need to fly out of the country. People need to fly into the country. The so, I, I, I yes. Yeah, so, international uh, um, 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 travel agencies need to repatriate funds. So, the need for forex is extremely high. The CBN is has going is definitely continue rationing in a bid to you know uh, um, service demand in the little way it can. Um. So, but the truth is, not until there is significant and consistent increase in forex supply at the official window that can significantly meet demand, exactly. you know, this um, um, currency swings will definitely continue. Exactly. All right, let's look at some uh, commodities now. See, uh, cocoa, uh, there's a shortage of uh, cocoa, and uh, some are actually hoarding yes. uh, cocoa beans at this point. What's happening? Yeah, so what happened was that um, because of the flooding and um, increased rainfall that happened um, um, during, the, during the main crop harvest in September, some, um, ma some market has decided to hoard, which is pretty typical. I mean, it also, we also see that happen with PMS a lot of times and where we see there's an artificial scarcity in a bid to just increase price and then they're able to make more and this is because they're they um, speculating that the um, their, their output is going to be low and, and demand is going to surge so they need to just make up for the fact that within a particular period um, they're not going to be able to sell so right now that's exactly what happened and this has been going on for a few months and so currently there's really a shortage of Cocoa. cocoa. I mean, in all your states, <laughs> according to the report, there is no cocoa to sell. Meaning, and, and there's no cocoa to sell, so they don't even have a price for cocoa right now. And with that, I remember that cocoa is one of Nigeria's major trading, um, traded agricultural products, and um, it provides, you know, definitely a substantial um, increase to our export earnings. And if this is happening, it means that number one, the increase in cocoa prices globally, Nigeria cannot take advantage of it because we can't even meet our domestic demand. How much more export. That's another commodity. Yes. And then so and so currently uh, marketers are waiting for the um Waiting for the meat crop harvest, which you know could likely start early next month before anything could happen. I remember there's a long gestation period for cocoa. So before they, before the, the before they plant, before you know the harvest and all of that. So it's just going to take a while before Nigeria could even recuperate any funds. Quite interesting times maybe for yes. commodities. It's like the, the year of commodities. Commodity, exactly, uh, exactly. 2022. Thank you so much. Uh, it may be always great to uh, have you. Uh, on the program, the maybe EAK analyst, financial derivatives company. Thank Always you so much. Happy. All right, now uh, well, let's uh, take a look at what's uh, happening in the markets. We have uh, in the, right there, I mean, we saw uh, quite a marginal uh, jump yesterday. Yeah, for the first time uh, this week, we saw that the market has turned and is now back on the positive track, and we hope that it will stay there at least for the rest of the week. Remember, that was a trend last week. Right. I think the first two or three days was in the negative, and then it now went up to the positive, and then it stayed there till the end of the week. But uh, let's give you details of how the market traded yesterday in the equities. It was up 0.05%, equities cap 25.4%. Uh, 
five two six. I think we gained about twenty billion naira yesterday in the market. It was added to investors first. Uh, happy investors yesterday in the equities market, and then uh, the volume uh, was the only one in the red yesterday. But maybe it didn't really matter because we see the value and uh, deals. The deals uh, the day before was about three thousand. And yesterday it was value. Value was about 2.53 billion naira. The sector's very mixed color. We have flats. Industrial and oil and gas were flat. MTN did a lot to drive the market yesterday. MTN and banking, but incidentally, UBA, which was one of the top trades, in fact, the top trade by volume, couldn't uh, move the banking sector into the red. But we have David Adonri now to help us understand how come UBA was a top trade by volume and yet the banking sector uh, still ended in the green. Hello, David. Good morning. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Good, Good morning. Always a pleasure being with you. Good to have you, Mr. Adonri. So we see that MTN Nigeria and UBA drove the market yesterday by volume and value. First, first off, Explain to us how come it was a top trade, but yet the banking ended in the red. Was it more of sell-offs or profit-taking? Yeah, uh, you see the equities market uh, right now is uh, in a state of dynamic equilibrium because um, there is uh, no price-sensitive uh, event or information to tilt it towards uh, a particular direction. And so, uh, just uh, in line with the analysis uh, we just uh, made, that um, last week the market uh, was up for a few days and then down for a few days. Uh, that is because uh, the market is driven by natural forces of supply and demand. And so, there is nothing uh, precisely that is uh, impacting the market. Uh, so we will see uh, today might be there will be demand for MTN tomorrow. It loses what it had uh, gained uh, previously because uh, the market is in a natural state uh, of a dynamic equilibrium. But let us hope that uh, the unfolding event in the international space will not uh, start impacting the equities market because uh, we already see we are seeing a lot of activities uh, gelling up uh, internationally. You know, yesterday the U.S. Fed uh, started the uh, interest rate hike, and we are also seeing um, what is happening in the crude oil uh, market wherein uh, the, the price has cooled down. These are all downside factors that are capable mm. of impacting the Nigerian equities uh, market negatively. All right, so, so, so far, yeah, so yes, far Mr. Dory, so far it yeah. seems like, like you noted, the equities market in Nigeria is not responding so much, you know, to the volatility going on. I mean, we can't compare it. Uh, two days ago, the Asian market was down to about how many years? About six years low. You know, all responding to what's going on in uh, Ukraine. Can investors use Nigeria's uh, NGX as a hedge at this time? Well, you, you know, the, like, Nigeria is uh, unfortunately very vulnerable to the events that are unfolding internationally because of the endemic import dependence of the economy. While a number of companies, uh, a number of countries that uh, produce commodities are likely to benefit from the increasing uh, prices of commodities uh, all over the world, a lot of uh, the uh, disruption to trade that the invasion of Ukraine is likely to cause. Uh, Nigeria may actually not benefit because uh, at the end of the day, there will be imported uh, inflation that can rub off that advantage. And if you also look at it, that the Niger Delta region of Nigeria is still restive. 
wherein the OPEC quota for oil production for Nigeria ought to be about 1.78 million barrels per day. Nigeria's oil production is even declining below the 1.42 uh, million barrels per day that was done last month. So Nigeria actually is not in a position to, to be extract a Mm, from, unfortunately. Yeah, from whatever is uh, happening in the international uh, scene. And right. It's even more complicated by the fact that the U.S. says is a hiking rate. Yeah, this expected. is likely to affect the Nigerian economy in two ways. First, All right. it can exacerbate inflation and then cause right. a reduction in capital inflow. Mm. So right, what uh, will happen you. is it depends on how investors interpret it. Yes. But so far, in, uh, the market has not reacted to it. The market is apathetic, and we just have a market that is flat. But it's just not going to be an hedge. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jorani, for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Always a great pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. So just before I hand over to Ladi, uh, let's see the other market, the FGN bonds yesterday. Total value uh, in that market was 2.32 billion naira, and uh, the most favored uh, of all was, well, 2036, 2027, uh, some not so close uh, tenors there. And then the CBN bills had uh, six uh, deals, while Omo on the open market uh, operations had 11 deals yesterday. Uh, well, it's just a little bit of NSD. Don't right. before Ladi takes over. Ladi? <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's see. Let's see if, you know, the investors bring some, you know, buying uh, pressure in the equities market today. Mm. Uh, thank you so much for the update, Ine. You're welcome. All right, so we'll take a quick break now. When we come back, we head to London. That's the moment. Just stay with us. This, this is one. All right, let's uh, head on to uh, London now. We have Juliana right there. It's all about central bankers against inflation uh, right now in the midst of uh, geopolitical tension. Uh, great to have you, Juliana. Good morning. So the, the Federal Reserve has raised uh, U.S. rates first time uh, since 2018, now all eyes are on the Bank of England. What sound bites are you getting? Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Good morning, Laddie. At about uh, lunchtime, our time, London time, we're expecting the nine strong monetary policy committee um, once they gather at Threadneedle Street to uh, raise interest rates for the third consecutive time. We're expecting it to be lifted uh, from 0.5% to 0.75%, uh, which is the pre-pandemic rate. And that's uh, because um, there is clearly a need to kind of get a grip on a monetary uh, policy across the globe uh, to bring it down to a kind of normalized rate. And yesterday we got that signal, didn't we, uh, from the US Federal Reserve. Um, of course, they only raised interest rates by a quarter of a point, but it was indeed symbolic because, as you rightly said, this is the first time we've seen that uh, since 2018. And Jerome Powell uh, did indicate that further a further tightening um, over the course of the next few months should indeed be anticipated. Now, there were some suggestions that there could perhaps uh, be a pause in the tightening of monetary policy and that's obviously because of what we're seeing in Ukraine um, and the surge in prices and also as well there is going to be a squeeze on um, households here in the UK over the next uh, coming weeks uh, because even though we know raising interest rates does bring back uh, down the level of inflation. It also um, increases the cost of borrowing. And uh, for most families in the UK, they are borrowing on something, whether it's their mortgage, uh, their car, their credit card. And those interest rates are going to start uh, piling up. But again, we are expecting a unanimous decision uh, by the nine uh, strong team. And we'll hopefully be able to update you uh, when we speak on BizInc. Right, I guess it's the, a trade-off between inflation and uh, a recession. Uh, let's look at other issues. Now, see the online uh, safety bill in, in UK is uh, being updated, and the government is saying the proposals will make uh, the UK the safest place to go online. Quite interesting. Well, yeah, that's the hope, and it comes amidst a time uh, where uh, legislators, regulators um, across the world are really starting uh, to uh, uh, tighten the grip around uh, the freedom of uh, tech firms, the big tech 
titans, most of them based in Silicon Valley, have um, really been under intense scrutiny over the past couple of years um, when it pertains to privacy, um, access um, to uh, data, uh, safety online, particularly for very young children. There have been a series of incidents over the past, uh, what, 18 to 24 months involving very young children and the kind of images that they're seeing online. Uh, so now there is this new bill, as you said, it's been updated because I believe um, it's been in draft uh, for over a year to, to basically tighten uh, the rules um, that govern uh, these tech firms, including jail time. Jail time uh, for some um, uh, heads of organizations, if they don't comply uh, with these new measures, they will be spelled out. They haven't been uh, spelled out at the moment, so we don't know the details of them, but also Ofcom, uh, which is a, a regulator overseeing uh, the kind of images that people see on TV screens and online in the UK will be given uh, further powers. Um, so, yes, uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson does feel he's ticked a box with this new bill. Quite interesting. All right, Julian, we'll get our updates from you later on on Business Incorporated. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. All right, now let's uh, look at uh, other markets. Uh, we see the, uh, let's check out the Fair Grid Index uh, in the crypto space. Now it's at 27 uh, of 100. Uh, that's uh, around uh, extreme fear still in the crypto market, even though uh, we see uh, a lot of greens uh, right there this morning. Uh, we see that uh, the price of uh, the market cap, $1.82 trillion, is up about 3.58% this morning. Uh, volume traded in the total crypto space, uh, it's up about 7.98%. Uh, and we see our Bitcoin dominance sitting at 42.73%. Uh, Look at price of Bitcoin. Uh, this morning, $40,774. Uh, dollars. We see uh, Bitcoin started a, 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 a new rise. Uh, it reacted to the downside and even uh, dived uh, below the uh, 40000 level. But it's uh, gained back up there uh, after that uh, liquidation that we got uh, in the market for the shorts. Uh, volume trade at $34.101 billion. But Ethereum, there uh, up about 4% this morning, is at 2000 seven hundred and fifty three dollars uh, we see it's uh, volume traded in ethereum fifteen point uh, eight six uh, billion dollars and now we uh, look at the top alts uh, by market cap we see bnb there at three hundred and eighty four dollars fifty cents it's up about three point two six percent it's uh, mostly green and that count i see cardano also uh, getting above that eighty cents uh, mark up four point uh, six nine percent uh, Solana eighty seven dollars six cents up about uh, five point five one percent and XRP uh, still below that uh, eighty cent mark at seventy eight cents per coin it's uh, up two point uh, nine seven uh, percent we see that the uh, the the, the uh, result from the Fed didn't really impact uh, the market uh, so much uh, let's look at the uh, top uh, gainers there we see uh, Celo. Silo there, topping that counter up by 34.94%. Uh, All right, let's bring in uh, Illuminate Additional now, financial market analyst uh, right there. Illuminate, good morning. Yeah. Uh, great to have you, uh, Illuminate. So yesterday we saw uh, the Fed actually uh, raise uh, rates yesterday for the first time since uh, 2018. But uh, interestingly, the crypto market uh, didn't really react negatively. Exactly. Um, market pundits were very surprised uh, because um, knowing fully well uh, that um, all our, all the ads were on deck that um, the uh, U.S. Fed was going to increase interest rates, and they did. Uh, so uh, we feel that um, the rate expectation were already priced in, and coupled with sentiments that um, the U.S. Fed was not aggressive as what many pundits, some pundits were expecting as high as 50 basis points hike, and what we got was 25. And surprisingly, after Bitcoin dropped uh, below uh, 40,000, it rebounded uh, 41,000 plus after the U.S. Fed made the speech. And I think uh, much more, um, the narrative is uh, people are more concerned, particularly institutional investors, are more particular about the balance sheet, which would really alight when the Fed will go aggressive on um, tightening more liquidity. So despite the fact we saw real upside, uh, we see that uh, the market were not really impressed. Um, take a look at Bill Gross, for example. He was saying that the U.S. Fed brought water gun um, to tackle inflation. So um, <laughs> these economists are not really satisfied, and that's why we saw risky assets, including tech stocks and the crypto market bounding. 
um, up. And also, you can't take the narrative that the legalization of um, the crypto market in Ukraine also added some form of clamor and support above the thirty-eight thousand dollar support level. Yeah, quite quite uh, a, a tough place for uh, most regulators now. Your uh, fighting between uh, inflation and, uh, and the recession. All right, uh, uh, Alumide, always uh, great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, now let's look at the uh, top five gainers there. We see uh, Celo topping that count is up about 34%. This morning is double-digit gains with room at $8.42, up 18.80%. Uh, and we see uh, a Sandbox there, $3.18. See Sandbox, uh, one of the uh, metaverse uh, platform there, trying to trend upward. It's up 12.88%. And uh, make it out, uh, $1,975, up 11.95%. And Ave there. Uh, up 11.29 percent, and they see the uh, losers count is quite lean uh, this morning. Just waves having that double-digit loss down 11 percent. So uh, traders taking profit on that one. It's had uh, quite a rally for a while now. And see GRT there down 3.99 percent, and uh, XMR, uh, the one of the uh, privacy tokens there, down 1.49 percent, and Luna uh, down 1.21 percent. So uh, the crypto space not looking bad. Uh, this morning, quite a green a morning we're having in crypto space. All right, that's uh, all for the markets uh, right now. Thank you so much uh, for watching. That's a wrap on the program. Don't forget to join us at 1.30 uh, for Business Incorporated. More updates and developments in the world of business. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ladi Williams. Enjoy the rest of your day.